Right, hello everybody, welcome to the second Rebel semi-final of the Season 10 playoffs between High Lord Salt and Doc Mark. High Lord Salt's also known as Sauce, so if I call him Sauce, um, it's, it's High Lord Salt. High Lord Salt's Nurgles, Nurgles? Nurgles FTDs versus Doc Mark's Dwarves, Rebel Brutalia. Um, the Dwarves are lower TV, so they've got a Wizard, and they've also got Boomer Aziasen, who's not bad. On defense, could throw bombs, but not so good against the uh, stinky Nurgle team, of course, with the, the five disturbing presences, make him not so good. Um, and yeah, I think High Lord Salt's a huge favorite here. He's got, um, you know, he's got Claw Palm, and he's got three Claw Mighty, three great warriors, Claw Mighty, Blow, Stand Firm, all of them. Um, really pretty incredible Nurgle warriors. And that's just enough, isn't it? And a decent ball carrier, Edge 5, kind of, for dodging and stuff. And the dwarves have, is ridiculous. They've got they've got they've got like they've got three guard total, which is not a lot, is it? They've got equal guard to the to the Nurgle, and they're outstrength by loads. They do have like the troll slayers. They've got a plus strength Lino. They've got this amazing vampire dude, um, vampire runner. But you know they, they've got thirteen players, but twelve and a half with Boomer. Um, Nurgle got a 13, but yeah, big favourite, I thought. Uh, Salt was, High Lord Salt. Yeah, a scary Nurgle team, especially for Dwarves, yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, I felt whoever won out of High Lord Salt and I would absolutely smash these Dwarves to pieces. Um, I would have been, you know, he needs, Doc Mark really needs to dice him to stand a shot here, or he needs High Lord Salt to play absolutely terrible. Um, that's you know one or both of those has to happen <laughs> for him to even have a chance because uh, I didn't like this not stand not starting the beast here because be giving them the guard assist and I don't really get why he wasn't on the LOS but he wasn't oh because he wanted to stick him but he could have still been on the LOS and, and just anyway couldn't he I didn't I didn't really get that but doesn't it matter? Yeah, and you know, the, the, with the wizard and the and the dwarf, there might be a chance. But this is good protection, actually, isn't it? I guess you could bolt him and blitz him. He maybe could have got the ball here, straight up. That might have been his best chance, turn one. Yeah, but if you, if you worry about that, you can. He's between two guards, right? You could have put the dodge player over here and had had the thing in between two guards. So I, I, I'm not buying that. Um, I don't get it. Does the one D only get the push because he's got stand firm beast? Very good. And uh, <laughs> boom is in. Boom is in. Uh, four disturbing presences here, and rolls a pass, um, which is. Yeah, I don't know what was going through Doc, Doc Mark's head there, but he threw a pass in four disturb no three disturbing presences. Um, ridiculous. <laughs> I don't know what his plan was, <laughs> but um, that's what he did. <laughs> I like not activating the beast here to keep everybody stuck on him, and just try to pick somebody off. Greed's it instant, instant greed reroll there from High Lord Soul, but he does have four, so it's not it's not terrible to greed that hit, is it? Gets the ball closer, and every turn, um, Doc Mark should be thinking about the wizard, shouldn't he? Because wizard into runner recovery, you know, gives him somewhat of a chance, but it's hard because he can't wizard and then pass it away, can he? So he'd have to just wizard then potato with the uh, with the dwarf, and he activates the beast and goes stupid. And as it happened, it only freed up two players, and one of which is the prime one you'd want to hit the beast. So it wasn't that it wasn't that costly a a a, a really stupid, um, but I still didn't particularly like it. Yeah, I, I assume he forgot that Disturbing Presence was a thing, yeah. 
But against uh, against Nurgle, that's a pretty big mistake, isn't it? See, maybe this could have been a wizard turn. Maybe he could have bolted the wizard, and uh, you know, this turn something he should have. He sh it's something he should have been thinking about every turn, for sure. Stands him up to get clawed. Um, just tries to recover the beast, which I quite like. Just, just try to recover him. Don't, don't hit. Just try to recover. This push direction is a bit shit, but he's got the second hit anyway, so it doesn't, doesn't really matter. And it's a straight Kaz instant strength four. It's a badly hurt, so we power lap holes it. Good decision. I, I wish I'd, I wish I had uppled the first badly hurt that I took against, against this Nurgle team. Um, obviously, has to protect the killer here a little bit. <laughs> I like going as far away from the uh, vampire as you can. He's not a vampire, he's a dwarf runner, but you know what I mean. And yeah, I, di I didn't really like when he put him up there the first time. It seemed like he was just asking to get him served. But, um, yeah. Maybe just thought, ooh, that's nice, shiny blue things. Don't know what it means. <laughs> Throw the bomb anyway. <laughs> Man, I, don't, I really don't know what was going through his head when he threw that bomb. That was really, really bizarre, wasn't it? So and I think he, he moved up. He moved somebody up there. I think he should have. Um, what should he have done? He should have had somebody here, shouldn't he, to stop the surf? But um, but it couldn't be the it couldn't be the vampire dwarf. So he's got a couple of options here. He could do the GFI to blitz him, or he could do the juggernaut blitz. Obviously, the juggernaut blitz is much more likely to work. Three, four, five, six. Um, and you get to use Juggernaut. So the killer blitz is better for the surf, but this guy, like, you, you use less resources because you can move him across there, which is nice, isn't it? So it wasn't wasn't obvious which way to do it. I, I don't know where in fair I should have I should have done my research before the match. It's G Man, something like G Man five or six, I think. <laughs> three, four, five. I know that High Lord Salt's in uh Rel three and I know that Archangel's in Rel three and I know that Hippie's in G Man one. But uh I, it wasn't quite a low division I think. Tough mark. I think six, yeah. It wasn't quite a low division. I mean that's why his team's not great, is it? Just one man team really. With this uh, this super runner, and there's a foul appearance, cheeky. Tentacles generating a claw, mighty hit, kind of. Now we've got a few claw mighty hits, and there's a Kaz. Just a badly hurt, so it's again instant apple. So you know he's got good value from from player player numbers with the apple, which is good. You know, two good players um, got Kaz with the uh, strength four and the guarder, and then he's had this guy miss next game, but doesn't care. Cause it's a rookie, so that's absolutely a nothing injury. Apart from obviously the drive, the drive's still really bad for him, losing losing another player. But like this drive's pretty much lost now, isn't it? Threat down four players. Um, so the drive is pretty much lost at this point for uh, Doc Mark. And the strength four's dead. <laughs> I like the push into the stand firm there. 
Um, so yeah, so now, I mean, you know, you would rather have used the Apple on these two anyway, I think, so it's all, I don't think it cares much about this. And now we see a rather bizarre play by High Lord Salt of doing a, uh, of doing a pass and a potato. And, well, as we can see, the, the first things the fireball saw, sphincter this world. So if we pause it. Now, would you have fireballed here? This uh, lightning bolted here. This was the thing at first, uh, you know, um, the rebel, the rebel commentary was like, "This is terrible, terrible play by High Lord Salt," and that was my first, that was my first reaction. But then I, I thought, actually, there's no recovery. He's got six players. <laughs> He's got six players on the pitch. <laughs> One stuck on tentacles and his movement four. This one's got dodge and movement five, but he can't get across far. He's alone a movement four, edge two. He's movement four, edge two. Four of them are stuck on a foul appearance, blodge, stand firm guy. You know. So, really, he's got one player free, which is the vampire. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, GFI, GFI. So, if that you get a three out of eight scatter, you can get it and then get claw pond. So... If my first reaction was, this is terrible play by High Lord Salt. Now I think it was just a, a great bait, wizard bait. Um, if the thought was to great the, bait the wizard, it was brilliant play. But I thought that wizard was absolutely, um, was I thought it was an absolute terrible wizard. Um, and I would have been overjoyed to eat the wizard there. I wouldn't have thought of doing it, of running out there to eat the wizard, to potentially eat the wizard. So if that was his intention, it was a good, it was a really good idea, I think. But, um... Yeah, I wouldn't have thought of, try, of trying to you know, entice a wizard in that situation. Um, but yeah, great, obviously great for High Lord Salt. The wizard's gone, and he's got the... <laughs> um, yeah, maybe he was tilted after the injuries. Maybe he was. Got to re-roll this. And he fails. So now... The vampire is not getting claw pond because he blitzed. But if he had um, if he had recovered the ball, he would have been claw pond. The only reason he's not getting claw pond is because he is because he couldn't get the ball. <laughs> so yeah, I thought it was a. I thought personally, I thought it was a terrible wizard. Uh, terrible wizard, um, because you know, with six elves that were in this position, you would struggle to recover. With six dwarves in this position, you've got no chance of recovering. So, yeah, but fouling against uh, against the dwarves not so good, is it? I like I like the beast in here. I w I would have hit the tackler though, hundred percent. I would have hit the tackler here, um, because you don't care about removing this dwarf, and as it is, he casts him. But you don't care. This guy, this he's movement four. He can't do anything. You know, the only way Doc Mark gets back in the game is with the edge four guys, right? So I would have hundred percent hit him. As it happened, would have would have cast him, but you know, and then he passes the turn, and he still hadn't used his blitz. You could have blitzed this guy um, to get the two dice, and then he could have run around. You know, there was an argument that you know you don't want to push, but you've got the blitz, so you could push him one, two, three, four, five, six. So you could have kept him more controlled by using the blitz. Um, so yeah, I should have done that. And then there you go, Duck Mark had a two D on the ball, one, two, three, four, five, six. And double one the dodge. It was pretty unlucky, wasn't it? But um and now he's right next to a dirty player, so he's about to get fouled. <laughs> and he could surf the he could surf this this guy now, couldn't he? Block him there, block him to there and then No, maybe he can't surf him, he hasn't got the players. Hasn't got a fast play enough to get him. Yeah, the double one dodge was it was a shame for him. And again, he hits he hits Boomer, whereas I would have hit the H4 again, you know, because this okay is armor eight, so you're getting more value from hitting him with a with the other guy. But um, I think for sure I would have I'd I've been trying to get rid of one of his fast agility players because when you're down men like this, you don't really care about your movement for H2 players. They ain't gonna pull out a draw or they or force extra to overtime or stop the score or anything. So gets the dirty player foul in, and it's a gym foul. <laughs> Sent off for a stun. Well done. <laughs> uh, 
Ah, yeah, it prevents the bomb, but still, I don't know. I mean, he, I prefer hitting him. He could have still hit him with a with a beast, you know. He could have three diced him with a beast. And we're gonna see a three dice. He moves him. He shouldn't have moved him. He should have. Uh, he does this wrong. Slight, you know. This is a nitpicky, but it is wrong, isn't it? He could have. Uh, he could have had this guy here. This guy here blitzed with a because it's juggernaut. So he could have blitzed him on three dice into another three dice if he didn't get the knockdown. So a slight, a slight, very nitpicky. You know, obviously it's understandable when you're in a high stakes, uh, a high stakes game. Um, but you know, just pointing it out for the viewers who are maybe new to Blood Bowl or whatever, that was was not optimal. It's not a criticism of High Lord Salt. <laughs> just an observation. <laughs> So, yeah, that was a pretty much a dream drive there. The wizard was, I, in my opinion, wasted. I thought it was a terrible wizard because it was with six players left on the pitch. And he scored on turn eight. And he made a bunch of removals. So, fantastic half for the Nurgle there. Four, eight, nine players. For Max for the rest of the match for Doc Mark. No real chance of a one turn. I guess you set up for a riot and hope you get a riot. But um, with disturbing presence, there's going to be there's not going to be a one turn. I mean, I don't think he could have. Maybe he's with a um, maybe he's with a quick snap. He could have scored with a movement seven one turn. But uh, with nine players, really difficult. And with the the uh, disturbing presence, better just to go for damage. I think, and maybe a, damage and maybe a riot is the play. Looks like he doesn't set up for the riot. He's got both runners back. I guess by having him back, you, you don't risk the uh, blitz on him if there's a blitz. If High Lord Salt gets a blitz, so there's something to be said for playing against a blitz, but I, maybe he should have banked on the riot. It's a perfect defense anyway, so there isn't a riot, and now he backlines it because he hasn't gone for the one turn. Or a riot. I mean, I guess he was playing defensively for the riot there, High Lord Salt. But also, it shuts down any possibility of a one turn. Not that there was much possibility of <laughs> a one turn, but yeah, I don't. I didn't like this setup though. I think he could have had the movement seven could have been one square back, couldn't he? And he could have tried for a riot. But again, yeah, maybe his head wasn't in the game after after all those cars that turn. Do you, uh, do you hit with Frenzy? No, he, just, he goes for the mighty blow hit. Doesn't really matter, he's just getting him SPPs at this point because Duck Mark's got the uh, reserve. I guess he's... Uh, no, it's not. He's, I guess he's playing for overtime as well, right? He's, he's, he's only 1-0 down. He, it could be overtime, so if he gets a Kaz, it could have an effect in the match. I mean, he is playing for all the time, isn't he? I, I assume at this point he is playing for all the time. I assume he hasn't given up. But there's still 11 for the Nurgle for this drive. 9 versus 11. I quite like putting the... Uh, just putting all five strong guys in the OS here. Um, you know, only nine players for Doc Mark. He does have the two Troll Slayers. And he does have two guards still. But I would have really thought about setting up uh, at least three big guys on the LOS. Um, maybe maybe just five strength fours on the LOS. I wouldn't have hated it because it was pretty hard for him to... Like, obviously, you can slam in after turn one anyway. But there's a decent shot of him removing rotters by exposing them. And there's a decent chance of him foul appearancing when he hits... When you've got five guys on the LOS that he's got to commit all of his team to... And then he can foul appearance them as well, uh, and stand firm them. I, I quite like the idea of just putting everything on the LOS. Well, not everything, the five. The four Nurgle Warriors and the Beast. But instead he sets up a little bit weak to... Um, it is, yeah, you know, this was safer. I'm not, I'm, again, I'm not criticising High Lord Salt at all. It would have just taken a cheeky one dice. And he couldn't have stopped him getting two dice. You know, with the uh, Troll Slayer and everything. 
so you know he could have he could have gotten them all knocked down and all cast so it's certainly not a criticism but um i would have considered maybe he did consider it but i would have, i'm just saying i would have considered putting all the strength on the los especially as with it being the playoffs isn't it the playoffs you've got to win at all costs or you should be playing to win at all costs not that i did but you, you should be playing to win at all costs and so you should consider that even if you don't do it This strength two, rotter, unbelievable. Strength two armor seven, rotter. <laughs> oh, so actually, that was definitely worth hitting him with mighty blow to maybe to keep the to get the uh, crap rotter on the pitch. So the dwarves are only one player down now, so it's not that bad for them. But they are down a lot in quality. Wow. Beast. Beast can base the ball. He, no, he can't. He can GFI to... I uh, thought that was a mistake there, but that was a mistake by me, miscounting. <laughs> he can GFI to base the edge four. That's pretty cool, isn't it? I wouldn't hate that. But he, he, he goes for the safer route. And... Uh, more sensible to get these on. Hello, Yuri Styles. Uh, yeah, I guess, I guess so. So he doesn't, he doesn't put any pressure forward, and, and I quite like not putting any pressure here. He, he doesn't have to put pressure on. He just has to hold the line, doesn't he? At the end of the day. Um, he just has to hold the line and not and stop any breakthroughs. That's all. That's all he has to do because he's got some. You know, the dwarves have got no agility and no movement outside of two players, kind of three. There is the blitzer as well. So there's the blitzer and the runner. So all you've got to do is target the blitzer and the runner and play safe. So there's really easy defence here for the uh, Nurgle. Him. But the problem is he can't hit the the runner here, can he? Not without a G. He could, he could G if I had to hit the runner, but I guess he'll just hit the uh, troll slayer. Yeah. I like the non-follow as well. Yeah, gets a cast, a cheeky cast. <laughs> But I like the non the non follow and withdraw bit because that's it. It's just keep him back. Don't activate the beast, and it's uh, it's really hard. Rolls a one. So that's three ones in a row for Duck Mag now, and it a snake. That not that this had to be a snake. It was a one in nine. Goes for the one D on the killer. <laughs> but that puts him in the killer's range. Cheeky one day. Yeah, so I actually I, I believe this turn he goes for the surf. Um, whereas I think hitting this guy's probably better. Hitting he can't hit him because it's GFI. So. Is he going to go on there? I think he should have gone here. Because there's only two players to worry about, isn't there? That's the thing, yeah. So he keeps him back as a safety, that's fine. Um, like, surfing, surfing the Slayer is good, isn't it? You know, don't get me wrong, it is good. But, um... And what I didn't like on this turn was not only the position of this Nurgle Warrior, should, I think he should have been right one, um, 
what I didn't like was this this character moving because the you know the only thing he has to do is stop a breakthrough, right? So I would have put him back to here somewhere to stop this Edge Four breaking through. But as it is, High Lord Salt has left both both Edge the Ad, the Edge Three dodge and the Edge Four with opportunities to do anything. <laughs> and uh, you know it's quite easily a three plus two plus for him, and a four plus three plus with a reroll for him. So he left them basically the easiest ways out that he possibly could have left them. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I think it gave him a bit of a chance. Only in one disturbed presence, so he remembers about it now. But then uh, gets the uh, gets the fumble. So now he's definitely going to blitz him. And should be an easy mop up victory now, shouldn't it? Get back to the safety. Maybe we can move this guy first. The Double Skulls. And that's a bit, um. That's a bit. Uh, I don't think he needed a bit of him, though, did he? I think he just had to play safe. So he rolls Double Skulls there. And then use the reroll. Then the next box double skull. So I guess he was trying to push and then get this guy in or something. And that's why I didn't move him. Yeah, if he pushes him to here, then he can go one, two, three, four and get the guard in for that hit. So that's why I didn't activate him straight away. Um, but maybe he should have re rethought that plan once the reroll was gone. Um, so he could have brought him in his insurance. Maybe. But it's uh, there was actually a greedier player that uh, Doc Mark could have gone for there. He could have gone for the blitz with the uh, runner the, the runner could have gone a three plus into a tackle zone blitzed like pick up the ball in a three plus with sure hands blitzed and then he would have had this guy able to react as well and that's kind of one of those situations where i wouldn't have hated having you know playing the kind of greedier play to get uh you know more high risk high reward um i would salt you can either run run in with this guy to hit the ball or you can run around but it's strength four, isn't he? So probably shouldn't hit the ball, I guess. I think it was a fumble anyway, it's a two, so. Probably. Don't know. <laughs> Doesn't pile on, because he wants the tackles on. This gives him the, the pow out without not having to dodge, but he's at four anyway, so I think this is probably better because now if he gets the push, he's got to make more dodges. So I like having them there. And he makes the makes the dodge with dodge. 2D, doesn't get the pow. This guy is tackle, so he should dodge this way. But he dodges, he makes an extra two plus through tackle, which he didn't need to do. Could have, could have done that with dodge. Could have gone the other way and made it with dodge. That was a slight misplay. And then he rolls another double one. <laughs> so that's a heartbreak of a dot mark. I mean, you know, he used all his rerolls getting there. So High Lord Salt probably could have scored in three turns um, to win in not regulation. And I don't think Doc Mark could have done much in overtime. But, you know, he nearly got the score there, didn't he? With that edge four guy, he could have done it again. If he'd, if he'd made it overtime, he could have won the toss and won for sure. So, um, but yeah, heartbreaker for him there. Sensible, moving him on the ball. He could have moved him here, though. I think it would have been better to have had him there. Um, he wouldn't have been blocking. He wouldn't have been blocking his recovery at all. Surfs a Kaz. Cheeky. Because the recovery's gone here, isn't it? Um, so, it, you know, he could have gone either way for the recovery. So I think it would have been better to have had him directly on there. So it would only been a 3+. plus. He couldn't have had a 2+. plus out. That was a slight, a slight misposition there. <laughs> yes, the, the, the dwarves were pretty bullied in this game, weren't they? Yeah. Random, random punch there. And he's got a chance here. I wouldn't have hit the four plus, but it's with tackle. But the four plus with tackle in or one D, because then you've got more of a chance of scoring. Whereas using all of your movement round, then he rolls a one on the GFI, and um, so he can just run over here and be safe. 
but he runs into the range of the Edge 4 and the uh, Edge 3. So this that was a really, really bad ball position, wasn't it? The ball should have been over here, um, 100%, and then he's just got these that are on the beast. But um, he moves into range of all these guys. So yeah, actually, Doc Mark needed the dicing to win and pretty much got the opposite <laughs> with uh, taking seven cars and rolling a bunch of ones at crucial moments. But then, you know, High Lord Salt got the double skulls and another double skulls in the same turn to give him a chance. And then in the end, uh, Doc Mark doesn't even go for the touchdown there. He had a chance of the touchdown. Um, he didn't go for it. But he he, could, he certainly could have done. He could have gone for the, the, the Rackler, could have one dice blitzed him. And then got a decent scatter, and then he could have dodged out and passed to him. So there would have been a shot. Um, now, obviously, what ev what everybody watching wants uh, High Lord Sol to do here is blitz the Vampire Dwarf for the good of the league. But what High Lord Salt wants to do is get a completion on this Nurgle Warrior who's on 15. So he doesn't blitz the runner. He, uh, he blitzes here to try and get the free up the Nurgle Warrior for the completion. Which is absolutely, absolutely the correct play, isn't it? He doesn't, he doesn't care about G-Man next season or the play, the chance of meeting Doc Mark in the playoffs next season. He cares about getting extra skill for the final. So absolutely the correct play. But he doesn't get it. So there you go. That was that was a match. Twenty two AV breaks, seven cars, um, and yeah, basically, if the dwarves had had those dice, maybe the dwarves would have made a fight of it. But um, they needed a lot of stuff to go right for them, and uh, they just didn't get it, did they? Really, that was the that was the problem. And uh, yeah, I I didn't like the wizard either. But you know, that's that's subjective, isn't it? A lot of people like the wizard. Um, so there you go. But congratulations to High Lord Salt, commiserations to Doc Mark. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.